EOU Fall Media Day continues. Up next here on the panel, we have EOU Cross Country head coach Ben Welch, Christy Rowe, and Ryan Booth all joining us today. And uh, Coach Welch, we'll go ahead and start with, uh, do you have an opening, uh, any opening remarks for the upcoming season? Well, you know, it's uh, hard to believe how many years I've been here, for one thing. Uh, should be a good season. The guys team is very, very deep. What remains to kind of be answered there is what our front end's like. I mean, we return all but uh, two of the guys off of last year's 17th place team and also return a couple of guys that redshirted last year plus a couple of new folks. So, ladies side will be a little more of a rebuilding year, but we have some good quality there. The big key there will be actually the depth. So, should be a lot of fun. Coach, uh, it sounds like a great runner who was not with the guys last season will be returning this year to EOU. That's pretty exciting news in uh, DJ Flores. Yeah, he'll actually uh, sit out this fall, or redshirt this fall as part of his transition back in after taking a year off. But we'll have him back for the track season and for the next couple of cross seasons after that. So uh, it definitely, anytime you get somebody that was in the top five at the national meet back, it's a, it's a good feeling. That a lot of talent. Uh, you got to be excited about the possibilities for this fall. Yeah, I mean it's uh, like I say with the guys, it's that that depth. You know, we uh, we have a good blend of the guys from <clears throat> the team that was fifth in 2010 and the team that was 17th in 2011 back. You know, because some of the guys from the 10 team redshirted. Ryan here had a bit of a foot injury uh, late in the cross season last year, uh, but ran third man in 2010, I think. Oh, yeah. So on that third or fourth guy in the team that was a fifth at Nationals, uh, seems to be healthy. We'll let him answer that a little bit later. <laughs> but no, very, very excited about it. Um, and uh, on the ladies side, as I mentioned, you know, we're rebuilding a little bit, but some good talent there. We have a uh, gal coming out of Alaska that was a, what, a six-time state champ up there, so she's run under well under eight. Uh, pardon me, well under 19 minutes in high school, which on the courses up there is pretty impressive. So, got a good transfer in there, and then a nucleus of good returners as well. So, should be fun. Eastern's got a long history of uh, cross country you know, being a great team. How do you keep those expectations high and work to, to achieve them every year? Oh boy, work is the key. <laughs> so. It is challenge, especially, you know, we move kind of from cross season to indoor to outdoor to what passes in off season into cross. So uh, a lot of it is is just trying to impress upon the, the returners and the new student athletes that there is a strong tradition there and that a lot of the hard work has been done by those before them. Uh, let's try to get them to buy into the training system. I adapt the training very much so for our environment. So for a lot of the people, especially coming out of high school, it's a significant change from what they're used to. So we just try to get them to buy in on that. And having good leadership makes a uh, terrific amount of difference in that. And that's one of the things I'm excited about this year as well, is that we have some very good leadership within the, the two groups. So sometimes reluctantly. But <laughs> so we have people that are willing to step forward and uh, provide that leadership. And that has been one of the big keys in the past. If I go back to 2002, there was a senior on that team that before that uh, season started, he goes, what is it going to take for us to be a trophy team at the national meet? So I laid out four or five things for him. And he wasn't a very low vocal leader, but he was a very quiet, uh, personable young man. And uh, he decided that that team was going to be on the, on the trophy stand, and they ended up second. And I have to be honest, an awful lot of the reason for that team's success was that young man. And I feel like in these groups, we have some people that are willing to kind of step forward and provide that kind of leadership. So, And we'll be having some conversations with those individuals about some of those excellent leaders we've had in the past, because that is a huge piece of the puzzle. Christy, uh, what can you tell us about the women's team this season, and what are your goals for the season? Um, I'm actually redshirting this season, so I'm just 
building up this year um, for next year. But the women's team this year, um, we have like four returners. And so, um, I mean, we hope to like continue what we've been doing for the past couple of years and then just help the freshmen and the transfers, um, you know, learn how to run the way we run and transition into the team. And so we just want to build up this year and work as hard as we can. So. Uh, Ryan, you've put together one of the best careers any runners had here at Eastern Oregon. What would it mean to finish strong uh, this year in cross country? Um, it would mean a lot to me to have a good uh, cross country season because uh, the last few years I've had a lot of track success and it rarely compares to the team success that we have in cross country as far as the excitement and the passion that's involved when you cross the line knowing that your team finished fifth or um, tenth or something and you were ranked like 18th going in. And so I think one of my biggest goals for this year is to get my teammates to have any s sort of success that I've experienced like on the track. And I'd love to have that in cross. And so uh, I don't know. I always tell my teammates every year, I don't care what we come in ranked. I want to get higher than fifth, which we got a few years ago. So. I always just tell them that's our goal. Whether they think we can do it or not, they need to try for that. So, uh, Coach, the Cascade Conference is always a great, great conference. Uh, talk about some teams that uh, will be competing with this year. Boy, it's going to be deep again. Uh, Southern Oregon will be probably ranked in the top three or so. Uh, the preseason polls come out later this week. I'm actually a Raider on the women's side this year, so I swore after doing that in the 90s, I'd never do it again, but we had a coaching change in the conference, and the guy that was doing it is no longer in the conference, so I got tagged. I guess that's one of the hazards of having been here for so long. <laughs> but uh, it's deep. I mean, it's the, the interesting thing about the women's side is there probably are two teams that will separate a little bit in College, Idaho. Uh, they were seventh at Nationals last year and returned virtually everyone. They have... Uh, one individual who was hurt last year back and healthy. Uh, they also have uh, a good transfer. They're deep. I mean, they have the best depth and the f best front end to anybody in the conference. Northwest Christian was actually fourth at nationals on the women's side last year, but depth tends to be their issue, and that could be where Concor uh, pardon me, College Idaho kind of rules the roost a little bit with that, especially with some of the breakthroughs they had. And then after that, it's Pretty good question on what will happen. Concordia is the program that had the recent coaching change, and actually they didn't hire their new coach until after the deadline for preseason rankings was in, so we don't even know what they have. Uh, on paper, they could be very, very tough to handle. They could be a top 10 team. So all three of those teams were actually in the top 10 at the national meet last year with you know Northwest 4th, College Idaho 7th, and Concordia was 8th. So. I don't see any reason why it won't be tough like that again. And then you throw into that mix, Southern Oregon, they have some good front end. Depth will be their question. But their potential, if they can put things together, they may be a top 10 team. Uh, they may be a top 15 team. And then, you know, our ladies, will. the depth will be the question there as well. And Oregon Tech is a much improved program this year, potentially. They have a Northern California uh, league champ uh, from the community colleges down there coming in that's pretty tough and they have some decent depth so there could be six or seven rateable teams in this conference out of ten whether we'll ever get that is a good question most of the conferences out there aren't more than one or two deep so they tend to have a tough time understanding just how deep this conference is the men's side you know Southern's been in the top four the last three years they won it two years ago uh, they're loaded. They're deep. They're the team to beat in the conference. After that, it's a pretty good toss-up between College of Idaho, ourselves, and uh, Concordia.
Concordia on paper at least. We'll see, you know, there again what they actually have when the season gets going. And we'll also see uh, exactly where we're at. We may be ranked second or third in the conference, but that's certainly not the not our goal. So when you have one of the best teams in the country to shoot for, it helps you raise the bar a little bit. For a long time, that was us. We had five straight years where we were in the top 10. And to a certain extent, the conference had to get better to, to beat us. And by golly, they did a good job of it. So it is the deepest conference in the NAI. Christy, this question is for you. Don from Colorado Springs. What's it like running under a great coach like Ben? Um, it's pretty great. I mean, um, coming in as a freshman, I didn't really have any idea what I was doing. And he's really good at um, leading people into training, like just in mileage and um, his advice that he gives you while you're running. And then as far as racing goes, um, he just like helps boost your confidence. and. Um, I mean, we put all the training in, and he let us do that. Like he showed us how. And after we have all that training in, then we go out and do our best and just try to um, impress him, I guess. <laughs> so yeah, um, it's really great. Um. <laughs> Ryan Justin from Salem says, how sweet would it be to outrun those guys from Southern Oregon this year? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> It'd be the highlight of my collegiate career for sure. Um, I don't think it's, I mean, they're really good, but we're going to be dangerous on uh, with our pack dynamics this year just because we have a really tight group. It's going to be a battle for the number one spot, and it might be three or four guys all running really fast for that number one spot, which is going to make a team really fast. And uh, I think we have the the guys on our team that uh, they believe in themselves and they have a, uh, a faith in our team's ability to come through in championship meets because they've seen what how Ben uh, prepares us for nationals and conference in the past and we pass that on to the freshmen that hey we perform well on these meets so that's what matters and time and time again we do it so can only wait till then uh, Christy and Ryan, out of all the places you guys have run uh, here at Eastern Oregon, what's your favorite course? Um, that's a tough one. I liked the Spokane race last year. We had a race up in Spokane. And it was actually, for the women, it was a 6K instead of a 5K. We usually run 5Ks. And it was nice to run a different distance, and um, it was a nice course. That was my favorite so far. I think my favorite course is probably uh, Willamette. Um, a lot of times the field is what makes that course so great, but it's got a lot of uh, uh, some small hills and some downhills. Um, helps for, to make you run in a good rhythm, and I'm a good rhythm type runner, so it works really well for me to run that course, so I like it. Plus, he gets to finish with on the track. I mean, yes. Foot speed, that's a fearsome sight. <laughs> uh, another question for uh, Chrissy and Ryan. Uh, cross country runners are uh, a different breed. I mean, most athletes <laughs> don't like running, that's a punishment. Um, you guys are pretty unique athletes. Uh, talk about how difficult it is. Is it difficult to get out there every day and just run? When I first started running um, and I first started training at Eastern, it was a little bit. It was kind of hard. And at first I was kind of driven by a motivation to see what I could do, to try to set some goals and meet those goals. And then as I got older and more... Uh, conditioned in the sport it just kind of it kind of becomes something that you do to maintain a balance in your life and so in the mornings I get up and I think man I'm just don't feel like today's gonna be a good day so I'll be like okay well I need to go do a run and I start start running and it may be horrible 
but by the end, everything feels great, and I get done with my run, and I feel good about myself, my day starts off well, and it's kind of how I've kind of learned from running about how to approach life. Like, you just kind of, you jump in, and things work themselves out, and in the end, everything's always great. So, I couldn't really do without it, so that's what it is for me. Um, I agree with Ryan. Um, at first it was really hard for, well, my, in high school when I started running it was kind of hard, but it really helps to have great people to run with, um, going out running with your team, and just getting to know people that like doing what you do. And um, I mean, when you're running on these beautiful trails out in the mountains, I mean, there's nothing greater, so it's pretty hard to not want to do it. <laughs> Uh, coach, what do you do to punish these guys? Because most coaches send them out <laughs> for runs. Do you tell them they're not allowed to run, do some sit-ups? What, what do you tell them? I do have a few people that that is the incentive. Is do what I say or you can't run as many miles as you would like. Uh, there is a T-shirt out there that says, our sport is your punishment. I've always thought the other side of that should say that your sport is our play because that's what these guys do to get together and recreate. You know, They, they goof off. They, you know, they go kick a ball around or play basketball or whatever. Uh, not to diminish those other sports, but it is a different mindset. And there's a, a level of fitness that you achieve eventually, and it's hard to convince freshmen of this, especially if they were low mileage people uh, coming out of high school, that once you get truly fit, it's a whole different feeling. And as much as trying to, uh, rather than trying to punish people with things like that, I try to use that as a carrot for doing things right is that you know if you do things right you will get to that point you will really be able to experience those true high high moments so uh swimming pool works pretty good as a deterrent <laughs> so if i catch people in playing intramural basketball or something like that i always tell them if you get hurt you're going to grow gills because they'll be living in the swimming pool so works real well with blondes because they don't like green hair uh <laughs> at least not chlorine green i guess uh, but that, you're right though, it is how do you, you know, most teams, their punishment is to make them run, but uh, on the other hand for us, it's sometimes it literally is, no, you can't run that much because you're not doing things right. So, weird group. So, what makes us click though? Get all that kind of craziness lined out in the same stream and that's when the teams are really great. <laughs> well, any more questions for cross country? Well, we appreciate it, uh, guys, for coming today and taking the time out, and good luck this season. All right, thank you. Thanks. And uh, that was the the final panel. We're going to have uh, the interim athletic director, Angie Weisenflu, up in a couple minutes, and she'll come up just for about five minutes. We'll wrap things up, be done by one. She's got a, a couple more areas she'd like to talk about. So we'll take a two-minute break and come back with Angie Weisenflu.